entire fact that the net serves as a space of creative possibility creative possibilities of subjectivity and identity so in the lambda mu case there is a very interesting and disturbing event that took place the event concerns a character called mr bungles a character called legba and star singer so as i described you know everyone has a particular persona and mr bungles basically was somewhat of a a hacker who hacked into the code of legba and star singer and controlled their characters and what mr bungles did was that he publicly publicly in terms on the net raped legba and forced star singer to kill herself self mutilate herself now this event is really one of the most important events in the history of cyberspace and the imagination of regulation because the nature of the event poses a number of questions what actually happened you know on the one hand of course nothing really happened because the entire thing was just a textual interface so it was like mr bungles now forces legba to remove her clothes he didn't actually remove her clothes in real life but this is a textual interface that 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 it actually took place in so a number of questions really emerge so the question is really about the ontology of the event what actually took place out here you know how do we think about this in terms of its impact of thinking about law there are two possibilities one is that you could argue that what was needed was greater regulation of the of the net and hence the application for example of offline laws to the online practice alternatively what one could think about is that in relation to the kind of norms that existed within this community called the lambda mu community what were the ways in which a certain organic theory of law started to emerge so rather than looking at law as something that comes externally and instrumentally how do we start thinking about cyber space as as a space that enables a reflection upon its own you know practices and how do these two worlds of regulation meet so the popular account of cyber space and the account of anxiety around <clears> it is the fact that it's the wild west where there are no laws there are no regulations there are no norms <clears throat> fact of the matter is that there are all kinds of norms that exist that govern virtual communities and the challenge of thinking about cyber laws is not to think about laws <clears throat> that exist in the offline space and how they are applicable to the cyber community but how they dialogue and have a conversation with alternative notions of norms ideas of law and legality that may already exist in virtual communities and i think that when we are thinking about the future agenda of what we can think of as cyber laws the research question really lies in thinking about a plurality of norms a plurality of of jurisprudence where there is a production of ideas of legality which are beyond those that are imagined by let's say a state legal system Lawrence, uh, uh, you have raised uh, a number of critical concerns, mm. and uh, how the dominant uh, conception of the state uh, of regulation uh, and control, which leads to the, uh, uh, which is a reality uh, existing uh, in India, uh, and also you have said about uh, when we look at, there are only few uh, people those who have commercial exploitation of the internet. but how do we look at this internet as a medium for the public and for the wider public good and what are the alternative conceptions even though you have uh, highlighted some of the issues but uh, how do you think we can uh, proceed forward and develop an alternative thinking and a conception rather than a state regulation paradigm there are two aspects to the question the first is the nature of the internet as a particular kind of public resource now there are ways in which we can think about it in terms of the net as a space where people access information communicate with each other or engage in online activities whether it's research entertainment etc and i think what is interesting to think about is that there is a layer yeah. beyond the initial layer uh, and there is a layer that really people forge through the identification of being a part of a virtual community now this community is not your traditional community which is bound by geography bound by time and space but it's nonetheless a community community that also establishes for itself an entire world of norms an entire world of modes of behavior right so it's not like it's a space that's outside 
And I think for us, it's important to try to bring <coughs> some of these concerns and some of these practices into public discussion. Because the dominant discussion really has been about the idea that there are no norms and no laws, and that it's all about an anarchic freedom in which all kinds of dangerous things, child pornography, cyber stalking, etc. Right? So I think it's important to keep in mind this balance between the white and the black. There are a whole range of gray areas which we need to theorize, intellectually think through, and also try to see how they can inform the imagination of law and not just the other way around. You discuss in your lecture about the uh, concerns of the society and state and the individual privacy, basically in relation to regulation of cyberspace. Like, uh, basically, what is the need for regulation of cyberspace? But uh, one question is, uh, which I think uh, you should throw some light on that, that basically like uh, there are two types of regulations we can say. How we can regulate the cyberspace? Like one way is self-regulation, which uh, and then other is state uh, regulation. Sure. So basically, uh, to, uh, in this uh, today, uh, more importance or more emphasis is on uh, how a self-regulation uh, scheme or methodology. So can you throw some light on this aspect? Sure. Uh, I'll take this from a practical example. If you take YouTube, YouTube is a space that allows for the sharing of videos mm -hmm. across the world. There are various kind of questions or issues that may emerge from YouTube, including, for example, the circulation of obscene material, the uh, violation of someone's privacy, etc. But the fact of the matter is that if you look at YouTube, YouTube has over a period of time evolved a system where the users themselves tag material. You have an opportunity, for example, of tagging material as being inappropriate, okay. or you have an opportunity of tagging material as being culturally insensitive, etc. Right? Now, when you're talking about millions and millions of videos, uh, it becomes almost impossible for the state to actually play the role of the watchdog all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's important then to think about ways in which people are able to regulate themselves. And this is where I think <coughs> the, the two worlds have to talk to each other. What the law presumes is that there is no form of regulation apart okay. from itself yeah. and that there is no imagination of ethical ordering of the ways that people relate to each other apart from the one that's morally sanctioned by the law. And I think this, that the net has conclusively challenged this yeah. because if you take new forms of, of knowledge production, Wikipedia, the greatest encyclopedia in the world collaboratively produced, it shows that when people collaborate and, and come together, it's not just to destruct things, it's not just to, you know, to, to hatch plans of terrorism. It's also about new forms of relating to each other. And I think that the, the jurisprudential challenge for us is that when they get together to ima imagine new forms of regulating conduct, mm -hmm. are there better laws that emerge from that process than the ones which you don't have a say in? You know, we the people mm -hmm. of India never signed the constitution. So if we were given a chance, would we be writing something slightly different? We had an interesting uh, discussion on the regulating cyberspace and a number of concerns have been raised uh, by Lawrence Leung. And it's a uh, high time, uh, there's a concerted discussion and dialogue needs to be initiated in India to look at uh, and to uh, formulate the alternative conceptions for safeguarding the rights of the citizens and not to be just uh, confined to the state conception of uh, the regulatory and uh, surveillance uh, uh, policy mechanisms. And uh, this will be a beginning uh, uh, and uh, we will have a, a number of uh, lectures in this series and we look forward uh, for your uh, suggestions, comments and uh, uh, sharing these concerns in a wider platform.